Okay, welcome back to another Methog episode 16. Which, by the way, I want to say this now. For now on, I'm not going to say the name in the actual, like, recording part. I'm just going to do it in post and put, like, some text up saying whatever episode it is. Because basically, after everything dealing with that Devil Man stuff and how much that put me behind, like, with the PlayStation event, that was supposed to come out a long time ago. But I want to keep this, like, in numerical order. So that was one of the reasons why I didn't drop it immediately after, even though I recorded it immediately after it happened was because I was trying to get the devil man's crybaby stuff, uh, done. And like I said, I'm trying to keep it in numerical order. So for now one, I'm just going to say whatever episode is in post. So, but I know this is episode 16 and this will be coming out after I upload the PlayStation one, even though that one's like a month late or whatever, but it is what it is. A lot of things that I say still, Still a very valid. But anywho, we're going to be talking about the Xbox games uh, thing that they just had. I already forgot the name of it. It was the Xbox game. Uh, was it games? I forgot the actual name of it already. But anyway, you get my point. Whatever the name, Game Showcase, that's what it was. Um, we're going to be talking about the Game Showcase. And just like with the PlayStation one, uh, we're just going to sit down and talk about each one. And, and how I feel about it, just like every other person uh, on YouTube right now that's in the games. They're doing the same thing, so why can't I? Uh, but one thing I will say is this. I want to start this video off by saying all of this. I was really hoping that Xbox would come with some heavy hitters because, you know, even though this is not anything new and everybody knows this, that Xbox has not been winning this generation, I really don't want them going to the next generation losing either because at the end of the day competition is good i know you have your fanboys out there which i still think is one of the dumbest things ever i don't understand why you want to shield for a company that's that doesn't give a single solitary fuck about you but hey i guess that's just me i understand that we have fanboys but the simple fact of we need companies to go at it with one another and honestly a lot of the things that microsoft has done is the result of that and yes, you can say they did that because they're losing, which is true. But at the end of the day, they're doing it and they're doing it well. And what I'm talking about is the game pass. But either way, what I'm saying is that, or anyways, that's what I meant to say. What I'm saying is that I don't want Microsoft to go into this one losing. I want them to actually be a force to be reckoned with going up against Sony this generation. And unfortunately, with the games that they showed off, it still looks like that that's not going to be the case. Um, just in, in these games don't look bad, but with the lineup that Mark, I mean, that Microsoft that Sony had, uh, this is not, this is not looking good. It's not looking good. Um, and I hate that. I hate that because like I said, we need that competition. We need Microsoft to be there. Nintendo has always been off doing its own thing. So Sony technically doesn't have competition right now because Microsoft is dropping the ball. Nintendo's always doing their own thing. So Sony gets to do whatever they want to do. And I really want Microsoft to bounce back. I'm hoping that they will eventually. And they've already said, especially your boy Phil Spence, shout out to Philly Spence. Uh, Phil Spencer, he's already said that a lot of the heavy hitters are not coming on till later on down the line. But that's really, I think that's going to hurt them. If their heavy hitters are not real heavy hitters, like on some moderate level type heavy hitters, like calling in a meteor and then while the Suchikage is holding that one off, you call in another one type heavy hitter. If it ain't like that moment in Naruto with their heavy hitters, they're going to have another problem again. And I don't want that. I don't want that. But I also want to say this. This really shows how weak Microsoft has been for a long time now. It's just that we didn't know it, right? The reason why the 360 was as big as it was is because it had a lot of third-party software. It had a lot of third-party games. Because if you really sit back and look at what Xbox had when it comes to exclusives, at the end of the day, what it really boiled down to is the ones that we keep on getting now, Forza, Gears, and Halo. That's all Xbox really had. I know people are going to be like, oh, what about this game? What about that game? But let's be real here. 
the ones that they really had exclusive wise was Gears, Halo, and Forza. What made the Xbox 360 so good was the amount of third party games. That's what made it good. Because for all you out there who don't know, who don't get into all of that stuff when it comes to consoles, is that the Xbox 360 was easier to develop for than the PS3. That's well known at this point. That's why a lot of people didn't really develop for the PS3. And if they did, it was mainly fucked up and broken in some way, shape, or form, because it was just hard. Even Sony has said that. They know that. They acknowledge that. That's why they did and went the route that they did with the PS4. And we all saw how that happened. But either way, th this shows you how weak Microsoft has been once you rip that Band-Aid off of the third-party exclusive. This really shows how they really didn't have nothing and how Sony has been killing them with the things that they have. Whether or not you like the games that they have is not the point, okay? Whether or not you like The Last of Us or Uncharted, uh, Infamous, uh, like uh, God of War, and the list goes on and on. It doesn't matter whether or not you like those games. It's a simple fact that they have them is what's been killing Xbox, especially in this generation where they didn't have the third party support, where they did have the exclusives. It's been killing them. It's been killing them. So I was really hoping to bring it around full circle that this lineup that they will be showing would be the thing that really kind of like punches Sony in the gut and be like, hey, bitch, I'm still here. Don't count me out yet. But unfortunately, this ain't it. This ain't it. Once again, I'm going to say this again. I know that they got stuff coming down the line. I know that. But at the end of the day, those launch titles need to be heavy hitters. Because like I said in my PS5 event, or, or PS5 event video, me thought, whatever you want to call it. Sony is already won with that Miles Morales game. It doesn't matter if you don't like Spider-Man. It don't matter if you don't like Miles. It don't matter if you don't like PlayStation. None of that matters. At the end of the day, that's a heavy hitter. And that's going to sell. That's going to sell consoles. And to me, none of these games say that. None of them. Not a single one. Not even Halo Infinite. But we'll get into all of that uh, and how I feel about Halo and all that when we get into it. So let's go ahead and actually start talking about the games. So starting off with Echo Generation, I'm not going to lie, this game looked kind of cool. Kind of remind me of like Minecraft slash Minecraft Dungeons mixed with like, well, I wouldn't say Minecraft Dungeons. I would just say, well, I think the camera perspective is what I'm saying about Minecraft Dungeons. But it's like Minecraft mixed with Minecraft Dungeons mixed with a JRPG uh, and Stranger Things. It looks cool, though. I can't lie. I'm not going to sit here and act like it doesn't. Uh, but once again, this is not a game that I would just outright go and get. Um, but it does look cool. And another thing is that all these games are going to be coming out on Game Pass. And um, it's going to be coming out on PC as well. So I'll just get it when it comes out on PC for Game Pass. But yeah, I, it looks cool. I'm not going to lie. Then you got X Machine. I, I still don't know why I can't say this for some reason. Exo Machina. Exo Machina. I'm pretty sure that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, Exo Machina. Oh, no, no. There's, there's no N. Exo Mecha. There we go. What the fuck am I? What is wrong with me? Exo Mecha. That, there we go. Why did I say Machina? What, where did the end come from? Anyway, I looked at this one. And this one actually looked pretty dope too. It looks like if it was like Crisis on 10. And like for some reason, like I just watched the trailer and it was like robots and shit. I was like, what, what is going on here? But I like it though. Whatever it is, I'm intrigued. I, or my intrigue has been peaked. Uh, but you know, I'm interested basically. I, I, I like what this is all about. So even I don't know what it's about, I'm all about what it's about. If that makes any sense. Next is state of the gate, state of the gay. Wow. Oh my God. Oh, see, and this is funny. I said this in my PS five reveal, uh, uh, video. This is why I don't record at four o'clock, five o'clock in the afternoon, because stuff like this happens. State of Decay 3. Now, I know about the first two State of Decays. I know the first one was not really that great. Um, I know the second one, people was just like, oh, it's there. 
So I don't apparently somebody's playing this in order for them to keep on coming out with it. I know the trailer was weird as hell. You had the black chick in the forest and she starts screaming and it, I was it kind of made me go, what the fuck is going on here? It was really weird. Uh, and then all of a sudden she ran into a deer eating a wolf and the deer was like, Meh! and I was like, what, what is this? So I don't know. I've never been into this. Uh, I don't know if the games are good or not. Uh, but for me personally, I, I don't care. I, I don't. Then next is none other than Forza Motorsport 7. Like who, like, like who wouldn't have thought or who wouldn't have thought that they would have made this game? I don't know why I feel like I'm saying that sentence incorrect, but you get my point. We all knew that this was coming. Point blank period. We all knew this was coming. I've never been into Forza games like that. The closest one, not the closest one, but the only one that I've really played and put some time into was uh, Forza Horizon 4 or whatever it is called. And to be real with you, I I, I don't, I'm I'm an arcadey person, right? I like those arcadey racers like Midnight Club and Burnout. I said this even in my PS3 uh, video. Those are the ones I care for. Forza is more of simulation. It's not my cup of tea. Just don't necessarily care for it. Uh, but I did have fun with Horizon, but you know, and that was mainly because Horizon was like this open world thing. I'm not a big fan of all the courses and tracks and all of that. So that's why Forza Motorsport 7 does not appeal to me at all. But hey, you know, they got Halo. They got to show off Forza as well. You know, they got to show off the Trinity. They got to show off the big triangle, uh, the big three every time they do something. Because if they don't, they they pretty much won't have anything. But even, anyway, bottom line, Forza Motorsport 7 is here. For all you out there who like sim racing stuff, um, yeah, so be, you know, I, I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Just whatever. Then up next, we got Tell Me Why from uh don't nod <sighs> don't look don't get me wrong don't nod got me with life is strange i went into that game completely blind i didn't know anything about it outside of like the whole time rewind thing but i didn't know anything about it i you know i heard people talk about it here and there but overall when i went into it i was very blind and i enjoyed the hell out of that game that was during the peak of you know the the uh uh what's the name of that studio that made all the walking dead games oh my god i can't believe i forgot the name of that studio um oh my god what was the name of that studio that made all the walking dead games well that's why we're on my computer that's why i'm on my computer what was the name give me one second people what was the name of that studio game uh, do, 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 do. watch when i see the name i'm gonna flip out because it's so easy telltale games there we go this was during the height of the telltale game stuff when they was you know cranking out the walking dead and um uh what was the other one wolf among us and all of that stuff rest in peace to that game oh my god that game just cannot catch a break soon as we about to get season two the company shuts down it's like oh my god can we just get season two of this game already I love The Wolf Among Us. I slept on that game for a long time. But anyway, bottom line, Life is Strange came out around, uh, yeah, Life is Strange came out around that time. And uh, I played it and, and I loved it. But the games that they have been making since then, it's just like, bruh, like, are you always trying to tell like a super sad story? Is this like the only thing that you guys can make? Can you do something a little bit different? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like at least with Telltale, despite how many games they had coming out and and you know they all were different qualities of of games like because you know some people say like the gardens of the galaxy game wasn't as good as like you know the walking dead's quality wise and stuff like that despite that they had different things and i don't know all the don't nods catalog so maybe they do but i feel like they just come out with the same shit where everything is just super over dramatic and depressing and sad and it's like oh my god can we come up with something different here like like to me the tone of the walking dead compared to you know gardens of the galaxy was different and that's what made telltale so good and then you had something like you know the wolf among us that made it different but for some reason don't nod it's just like dude we want to make you depressed as fuck and i just don't get it i really don't get it but um either way i'm not gonna be playing it outside of life is strange one i have no like i just have no interest in any other of the games that they've made i know life is strange 2 came out and i heard it was like okay 
to be real with you i don't even want to play that either like I'm, I'm i'm good next we have ori and the will of the wisp this game i don't i want to play this game because i want to see why people say that this game makes them cry it could be that i'm just like a like a cold asshole who doesn't have any emotions but i genuinely don't see why people would cry when it comes to this game and, and I'm, i haven't played it i haven't even played the first one so i don't know but it's just like every time i hear about this game people talk about oh it's so emotional it'll make you cry and and i'm like what about it makes you cry i don't i don't get it it don't look like it has enough but anyway the only reason why this was even a thing because this game is already out is that it's gonna have 120 uh hertz or it's gonna be up to 120 hertz so basically 120 fps that's what it's supposed to run in at 4k hdr as they have it listed here on tech radar um so it's it's whatever i just don't get the point of this game i want to play it just to see if it'll make me cry if i am just an emotional uh void uh, or a emotionless void of a person however fuck you want to structure that but you get what i'm saying if i'm void of emotions there we go i don't know why i kept on saying it backwards if i'm just that void of emotions but you get my point eh, whatever um what the hell is this avowed is that what that's called avowed like dead ass bro i'm about to drop chrome because chrome is pissing me off it has been acting dumb here lately i'm about to drop chrome like there's no reason why this is acting like that um oh this is the cg trailer of the arrow flying through the air this is the one that's made by obsidian yeah there's nothing for me to say because there's nothing it, it's nothing it's literally nothing but a cgi trailer but the one thing i can't say because now that i just remembered uh, the the thing about this I'm not gonna lie to y'all obsidian obsidian they coming for um bethesda's cheeks like they're really coming for bethesda's cheeks bro like when i mean they're coming for their cheeks they are coming to clap them cheeks you gotta put that emphasis on the p to clap them cheeks because this is basically their answer to skyrim because they came out with the outer worlds after bethesda fucked up two fallout games back to back fallout 4 and fallout 76 and obsidian comes out with the outer worlds and they're like yeah we just gonna take that from you because when you look at it bethesda we're the ones who made the best fallout game not you and you've been fucking up every since so you know what we're gonna do we're gonna come in and we're just gonna take this genre as a whole away from you we're just gonna make sure that you don't even make a game in this genre anymore that's what they did with the outer worlds could the outer worlds been better yes there's a lot of things they could have done biggest thing is the dating shit i'm still upset that i could not date in that game but you spend a whole quest getting one of your crewmates to hook up with some chick i still don't understand why you couldn't though like what 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 but anyway i'm just jealous because i wasn't able to date Pavati or julie i, mean, I ain't gonna lie to you those those i was going hard for both of them until i figured out that they was gonna get with one another and i was like are you fucking serious right now are you serious right now that's how you gonna do me but anyway <laughs> uh that's essentially what obsidian is doing with this game they're coming after the elder scroll series they're like we're, not only did we clap your cheeks with the fallout stuff and in, in, in the outer worlds now we're gonna clap your cheeks with the skyrim stuff like we, we're coming for your neck and your cheeks we're coming for both and uh, even though they didn't show us any gameplay, I want to see what they're going to be able to pull off. Because to me, The Outer Worlds was a really good game. And speaking of The Outer Worlds, that's what's up next. Outer Worlds Peril on Gorgon. Now, this game was easily one of my favorite games last year. Easily. Easily one of my favorite games last year. Um, Was it last year? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it came out during Christmas time. Or No, I ended up playing it uh later that year later in 2019 like christmas time last year but either way phenomenal game phenomenal game once again it could have been better could have been used it could have used more weapons could have used more enemies the whole nine but as their first venture into this not being with bethesda it, it was good i really enjoyed it and i was hoping that they would do dlc and i remember them saying something about dlc whether or not they didn't know whether or not they was going to do it or something like that 
But I'm so glad that they are because that game was so fun. It's so fun. I hope they expand upon a lot of things that they established in the original game. Give us some more weapons and a little bit more enemy variety and stuff like that. More planets and everything. But yeah, I'm 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 hyped for this. And then the simple fact that they got another one coming out. They didn't say when it was going to come out, but they said they do have another expansion that they're going to be dropping after this one. I'm hyped. I am super hyped. The Outer Worlds was easily one of my favorite games last year. Easily. Then we have a, As Dusk Fall. Look, I'll just say this. Is it for me? No. But it's for somebody out there. Why? Because it was made. So somebody out there likes these games. And somebody out there will get this game and love it. And it will be one of their favorite games of all time. And to that person, I say, I'm glad. But for me, this shit looks boring as fuck. I don't understand why anybody would want to play this. It looks like a stop motion comic that was slightly turned into a video game that was turned back into a stop motion comic. It, it does not look, it doesn't look appealing to me. Okay, I'll just, I'll just leave it at that. Just leave it at that. Then we have Psychonauts 2, which I know a lot of people love the first Psychonauts. I've never played the first Psychonauts, but I know a lot of people love it, especially on the original X-Bone. But for me, it's another one of those games where it's just like, it's cool. I know people love it. I don't have too much to say about it. Never played the first one. Really don't have no intentions of playing the second one. Might one day, but as of right now, I'm just like, nah whatever stalker 2 is one of those games that or stalker in general is one of those series that i don't understand i know that it was really big on the pc and he even says that in this article funny enough i know it was really big on pc but i don't understand the appeal of it i really don't understand the point of it like what makes it so appealing i i want to say it's and i hate to say it because i'm pretty sure somebody's gonna get mad and be like well technically it's the but I'm saying is that I think this was basically Tarkov before Tarkov, Tarkov. Like, I guess it's supposed to be within that realm. Or like one of those, like, I like that's how much I don't know about Stalkers. Like, I don't, I don't even know what Stalker stands for. Um, I don't know. Like, I can't, I can't speak on it because I don't know much about it. And that's just me. I don't speak on shit I don't know about. Um, but hey, they got a second one. People are hyped for it. It is what it is. Maybe when some gameplay drops, if it looks good enough, I'll play it. It looks very creepy, though. I know that. It looks very creepy. So that's all I can say about Stalker 2. Warhammer 40K, Dark Tide. I don't know nothing about Warhammer 40K, but I feel like Warhammer drops like 80 things a year. Like every time I turn around, something Warhammer related drops. So I don't know what Warhammer is. I think it's based off a card series or something like that or a board game or something. I have no idea, but all I know is that I feel like every two days something related to Warhammer 40K drops. But I guess this one's supposed to be like a tactical team shooter thing because you got four dudes walking through some creepy ass place and things are screaming and screeching. And, and I don't know if it looks like how it's supposed to look and it looks like a, a pretty dope team-based shooter i might play it because i ain't gonna lie whatever like the environment that they set up for it and the tone and, and atmosphere that they set up for it it looks great it really does but who knows for all i know it come out and be some top-down shit you know because why not you know they make these over-the-top super good cg trailers and then when you actually look at the game it's some top-down bullshit and you're like well okay why didn't you just advertise it as that next was tetris connected you play Tetris with people. Is is you play Tetris with other people? That's all it is. It's basically taking what Tetris ninety nine did and adding it to Tetris Effect. Great, it's Tetris. Next is Fable, which I know a lot of people love. One of my homeboys was a big fan of Fable. Personally, I've never played Fable, so I don't understand the appeal of Fable. Why people love it so much. I think it's one of those things, like I just said, that I would have to play it to fully understand. So I'm not discounting. I'm not knocking it. I'm just saying personally for me, I don't get it. 
but I know people have been asking for a new fable for years, so I gotta have a fan base. It gotta do. It, it had to do something right for people to be asking for for so for so long. So it's cool that, that we're getting a new fable. It's cool we're getting a new fable. The gunk. What the hell is this? I'm so glad they got the trailers up right here. What is this? The gunk. It just looks like some action adventure game. They really didn't show no combat. They just showed this little black chick running and. and running and, and running i don't know it looks good though i will give it that i like the art style but i can't speak on that much either because it's they didn't really show anything besides the environment and her running through it so i can't too much say anything about that so whatever it looks cool though it looks good maybe if they put some gameplay out and the gameplay is interesting i'll play it I'm not gonna lie to you because the game looks phenomenal but there's nothing for me to really talk about because they didn't really show anything. So, yeah. Everwild. Oh, my God. Okay. All right. Let's talk about this one. Not really. I'm bullshitting. I'm not going to talk about this one because this... <sighs> I don't like to be a negative Nancy. Or in this case, I would say a negative Karen. Or in this case, you could just say Karen because Karen's are always negative. So, I don't like to be a Karen when it comes to certain things. Which is probably not the best thing to say if you know what a Karen is. Never mind. But either way, you get my point. I don't like to look down on games or, you know, studios and be like, oh, blah, 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 you know. But this is one of those things where I'm just like, bro, why? Why is this even a thing? Like, who do, like who really asked for this? Like, who really sat down and was like, we should play whatever this is? So I don't even know what this is, dude. And that's what makes me even more angry. It's like, what is this? Seriously, what is this? What is the point of something like this? Even the parts that they did show, I still don't understand what this is supposed to be about. And you know, if the game comes out and the gameplay is dope, I'll eat my words. But come on, bro. Like, stop. You know this shit looks whack. It's like, what's the point? What is the point? You just circles and you make circles with energy and then fucking deers heal and run off. And it, I don't like, come on, man. It got to be more to it than that. It got to be. If it's not what's the fucking point in this game like seriously i i don't get it but once again if the gameplay comes out or because i'm gonna have game pass by the end if i sit down and play it and i fucks with the gameplay i'll happily eat my words but for right now what the fuck that's all i can say the next is the biggest bombshell for me throughout this whole thing because everything else i don't give a shit about this was the biggest one though and that is new genesis fantasy star online 2 or how it should have been called PSO2 New Genesis. This shit blows my mind. So first of all, let me give you a little bit of a backstory, okay? For all you who, who don't know. PSO2, right? The original PSO2 came out in 2013. And they kept on saying it will be released in North America soon. And seven years passed. And we didn't get that game until 2020 due to Xbox somehow working their magic to get it. But for seven years, people like me had waited for that game. Now, you had your workarounds because I did the workaround where you would have to download the launcher and then download the Japanese game. And then you would have to download the English patch. But the problem is that the English patch didn't translate everything. And you had to go into certain servers to talk to other English people. And you would have been stuck with Japanese people. And it was just a cluster fuck. It was. Until Microsoft released it in 2020. Which it still was kind of cluster fuck. Because a lot of people games didn't work. Like mine. I had to uninstall it. And do all this extra weird shit to get it completely off my hard drive. Then reinstall it. But the thing about it that makes it so crazy is that. They just dropped the original game in the US and then they're already coming out with this. And from what I've heard and seen is that essentially this is going to be a Final Fantasy a Re Final Fantasy 14 a Realm Reborn situation. So to give you a little bit of context and backstory on that, essentially when Final Fantasy 14 originally dropped, it was a hot mess, right? Final Fantasy 14 is an online uh Final Fantasy game. And when it first dropped, it was a hot mess. To the point to where Square Enix is like, all right, we just going to scrap this and completely redo the game, which then they end up giving us uh, a Realm Reborn, which is now one of the biggest games out there. 
Like, people love that game. People still play that game to this day. Like, it is huge, huge, huge when it comes to MMORPGs. And this is essentially what Sega is doing with this. I don't think you can transfer your characters over. I remember hearing somebody talk about that, but I can't remember what they said exactly. But I don't think you can carry your tra uh, or transfer or slash carry your uh, characters over. I think you have to completely start from scratch because it looks like that that's what they're doing. It's in a brand new engine. You can tell because the problem with PSO2 is that it looks like a seven year old game. It looked like it came out in 2013. Actually, it looked like it came out a little bit before that. But either way, it looks old. This game doesn't. This shit looks good. And the thing that blew my mind is the verticality that they added. From what I'm seeing in PSO2 and a little bit that I play, it doesn't have much verticality. You're not really jumping as high as you could. In this game, they're going full Attack on Titan type shit. Where these things are huge. And your character's just jumping up and hitting them in the neck and shit and you're fighting them that's what really got me hyped for this outside the graphics the graphics just look good in general but the verticality that they're adding to the combat it looks great and and i can't wait for this because i really wanted to play pso2 but it's just so much shit to do that it becomes overwhelming and it kind of deters me from playing it because i don't know what to do so that's why i really haven't played it as much as i would like but with this coming out next year and it's gonna be on pc it's gonna be on xbox i'm definitely looking forward to this game in the simple fact that it's gonna be releasing in north america and japan at the same time so we're not gonna have to worry about no seven year bullshit i am down for that i am so down and this i ain't gonna lie to you this is probably the biggest w that microsoft has had for me outside of game pass this entire generation because the simple fact of and i know i'm going into this long ass backstory and all of this stuff but just just bear with me because what i'm saying here it it you'll get it as i explain it essentially right the simple fact that xbox was able to get the one game that americans have been wanting for a long time now and, 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 and this is coming from a company that does not do well in Japan. This is what makes this so significant for me, at least, and probably to a lot of other people who really pay attention to this stuff. If you know anything about, or you pay attention to anything dealing with console sales and all of that stuff and how consoles are, Xbox doesn't sell in Japan. It doesn't. For some reason, it doesn't. Maybe because it's an American company and Japanese people have like a Japanese bias. I don't know. I'm not Japanese. I don't live in Japan. I don't know. But the Xbox has never sold well. From the original Xbox with the 360 and sure as hell with the Xbox One, it has never sold well in Japan. Never. That's never been their strongest market. But for them, an American company, Xbox, who has never sold well in Japan, to come in and scoop PSO2 to come to America and get it to come to America finally after seven years when Sony has had PSO2 on the PS4, when Nintendo has PSO2 on the Switch and they never made the attempt to have it come to America. The simple fact that you can go make a Japanese account and go get PSO2 right now on your PS4, but if you're American, you can't. That's some bullshit. But the simple fact that Xbox can do it and put it on their American console, bruh, that's some crazy shit. And then they follow it up with this, the reboot of PSO2 essentially. And it's gonna be coming out on the Xbox and PC. I ain't heard no mentions of PS4. I ain't heard no mentions of, of Switch that is coming out on both of those. Come on, man. That's some dope shit. That's the shit that I'm fucking with when it comes with Xbox. I really fucks with that. Like, you just don't know how much I fucks with that. Um, Crossfire is next. And I don't remember what this is. I think it's some FPS. Oh, yeah, it is some FPS. But it looks, I, I still don't know what this is. It has like this super, like, high cinematic story. I don't know. It looks good, though. I will give them that. It looks good, but I don't, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't even know. Is this like a multiplayer game? Or is this supposed to be, like, I, I have no idea. Oh, so it's from Remedy. Who made control in Alan Wake? That's why it looks so damn good. Okay. Okay, now that gives it a little bit more context and a little bit more. Okay. 
so it's from them all right i'm looking forward to it remedy makes some pretty decent games they make some pretty decent games so i'm i'm not gonna stunt i, I i'm i'm intrigued i don't know much about it because it's just the fps and it's a story trailer and you got people shooting and doing fucking moves where they dismantling people you got some weird cyber so i don't know i'll just have to see it i'm interested though i will say that i'm interested wait what are these oh these are games that are previously confirmed oh yeah no i don't i don't care about all of these yeah i know about cyberpunk 2077 i know about all of that uh no continue the list i don't want to see all of that stuff uh where the, okay here we go now we continue with with the stuff well well that's right halo infinite was essentially already confirmed so i guess that's the last one i'll talk about is halo infinite halo infinite and um yeah see look here's the thing with me i've never been a big fan of halo right i've never been a big fan of halo i've played halo 2 i think i still have it and I just never, I never was interested. Like I never got captured by the story as many other people did. And I think at the time when I played Halo 2, I wasn't really looking for stories in my games. I was just more looking for a game that was fun. It wasn't really until like, un, not Uncharted, but um, oh man, I just had it. It wasn't until like Far Cry 3 and um, uh, the last of us and those kind of games where I really start paying attention to stories and that started becoming my favorite aspect of games and, uh, stuff like, uh, da -da 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 -da, uh, mass effect two and three and stuff like that. Like those games that I, a lot of the games I start playing on the PS three is the ones where I really start paying attention to the story. I mean, it, like, don't get me wrong. Like there was some games I did before, like Modern warfare two and black ops and stuff like that. But to me, well, all of those was in the in the PS3 era. So yeah, I would just say it wasn't really until the PS3 era when I really started focusing on stories and video games. But when I played Halo 2, I just didn't give a shit. I really didn't. I did not see the hype of Master Chief in any of that shit. But I think because the perspective that I have now when it comes to stories and video games and how that's now one of my favorite aspects and with the Master Chief Collection coming out on PC... I think I'll go back and and play it and see if I can change if it's changed uh like how I feel about it. But to be real, with you, I don't even remember anything about it. Like I don't. I don't even remember anything about Halo 2 for me to even say whether or not the story was bad cuz that's how much I just didn't care at the time. So I'm pretty sure if I go back and played it, it would pretty much be like me playing it for the first time cuz like I'm dead ass sitting here trying to remember something from that game. I can't. I can't the whole time I've been talking I'm trying to remember something and I just can't but what does all of this have to do with Halo Infinite essentially I don't give a fuck about Halo Infinite that's what it has to do with it is that like I just don't care is the simple fact that I don't care for the series even after playing the one that everybody considers to be one of the greatest game of all time and one of the best in the series I just don't care and the simple fact that it's open world too I, I'm, I really don't care Cause my thing is that I hate how these companies keep on trying to make these open world games and they have nothing in them. Now, granted this open world that Halo could have could be one of the most like jam packed open worlds ever filled with wildlife, filled with random events. But to me, that doesn't seem like what's going to be happening. And if that is, what's going to be happening. I don't understand why they didn't show that off to begin with to show how crazy and how lively the world will be. Because this shit that they showed us looked boring as hell. It looked like an empty ass open world. You know, like a Ubisoft game. How Ubisoft games are normally big as fuck, but there's nothing in them. It's nothing going on. At least the Far Cry games had like where you would get attacked by animals randomly. Even though that happened like every two years. At least that had that. This game don't look like it has anything. And I just hate when companies do that, especially Ubisoft. They're the worst at it. They'll be like, ooh, this map is like 16 times bigger than this map. And, and uh, da, 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 da. But then you walk around and ain't shit happening for 45 minutes. So you're just like, what's the fucking point of me having this big ass map? And ain't nothing to do in it. Um, and like I said, I just feel like that's what Halo is. I don't know. I could be wrong once again. 
because I know how you Halo fans are. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. But if the world is more lively than what it's supposed to be, then why did they show that? They could have showed any other aspect to show how lively this open world is supposed to be. And for some reason, they didn't. So I can only go off what I've seen. And from what I've seen, this shit look like it's dead as fuck. It look like it dead fuck. You know what I'm saying? I don't know why I said it like that, but <laughs> I don't even know why I said it like that. It look dead fuck. You know what I'm saying? But, uh... <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, I don't care. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I think that was pretty much everything dealing with the Xbox stuff. Once again, all of this stuff that they're showing is some other chart. Uh, so I think for the most part, outside of that part with the Halo Infinite, I think I had went over everything that is related to the Xbox event. And yeah, for the most part, this shit wasn't it bro it was not it brah it really wasn't because they should have came with some heavier hitting shit they should have came with some heavier hitting shit and they did not uh outside of pso2 for me i really don't care for any of these games and all of them are gonna be coming to pc as well so i have no reason to even buy xbox Unless they start doing more backwards compatibility stuff. Then they got me. If they start doing more backwards compatibility stuff, then they got me. Then I would definitely be buying me an Xbox Series X or whatever the fuck it's called. Um, because I think the simple fact that, that you can go and play Red Dead, the first one, on the Xbox One X at 4K60, I think that shit's so cool. Or you can go back and play Ninja Guy in Black and all of those games. Well, Ninja Gaiden Black and then actual Black, like the game, the FPS that everybody loves from back in the day. Um, I remember I played the hell out of that game and I loved it, but I played it here recently. Yeah, that game is like, okay. Uh, but at the time it was like, oh my God, this game is amazing. Uh, but you know, something like that you can go back and play those games. And if you own the disc version, you can literally just stick the disc in your, in your uh, Xbox One X and just play it or i think it like downloads it or whatever so it can you know do what it needs to do with all the higher textures and stuff and play it or you can just go and bomb i think that is so cool so if they really start leaning into that which is the biggest thing for me so i'm glad i'm actually talking about this because this is the biggest thing that will help xbox for me at least i can't speak for everybody else but this was what will help xbox for me if they really start digging into that so they really start elaborating and really start just going like ham with the xbox uh game pass they really start going ham with the x x cloud or cloud x or whatever the fuck that shit's supposed to be called uh the x cloud they really start going hard with that which i think they are already because i think they said is if you have game pass x cloud automatically comes with it so that makes that even more consumer friendly but even more like per like a uh, uh valuable in um what, what, am I, what am I trying to say? It's like, I, I can't figure out the word I'm trying to put after more. That's why I keep on saying that. Uh, but you get my point. Like, it, it it makes it even more desired. Like, it makes it even more purchasable, I guess. Fuck it. We'll just say that. It makes it more purchasable, in my opinion, to want to go and get a uh, game pass because of all the stuff that they included. Uh, including. But if they start really leaning into that real heavy, and then they really start leaning into the backwards compatibility stuff where they really start bringing up games from their Xbox library and the Xbox 360 library. That shit, I'm going to be down for, man. I'm going to be down for. I'm going I'm to be ready to buy one. I am. Like, I'll keep everything else on PC, but if they really start leaning into that backwards compatibility stuff, which they're saying that they really are going to do, you can hang it up, man. I'm, I'm buying it. I'm buying one. And that's the same thing that goes for Sony Baloney as well. If Sony really starts leaning into their backwards compatibility and they start really bringing those PS1 games, those PS2 games, those PS3 games, and PS4 games to the PS5, and they make it to where you can play them with no problem, and I'm not talking about with that bullshit PlayStation Now stuff. I'm talking about like how Xbox is doing it, where you can purchase the games and download them on your console, not having to stream them off some shitty server somewhere. I'm going to be down for PlayStation as well. That's the main reason why I still have my PS3. So I can go, damn, I think they shut down the PSN store, didn't they? Damn, 
them motherfuckers man because that was the one thing i did i, I like going on there and buying ps1 games and and as a matter of fact the biggest thing that i've done that I, and the reason why i like the ps3 so much was because they put mercenaries 2 and midnight club 3 dub edition on the psn store but you have to buy them from europe which i still don't understand why i had to go buy them from europe but that was like the biggest things that i done on my ps3 and, and i love the simple fact that i can do that you can't get midnight club 3 dub edition on the ps3 i don't think i think that's yeah because that stopped at the ps2 yeah it was never on ps3 so the only way that you'd be able to play that on a ps3 is if you had the original ps3 the fat one that was 600 dollars that came with the built-in ps2 bullshit or whatever it was and you had the disc for it but the simple fact that i could go unfortunately to the european store and buy that shit and then do the same thing with mercenaries playground destruction playground of destruction that shit was fucking cool so i hope they bring that shit back with the ps5 if they really gonna do the backwards compatibility and then i hope xbox kicks them in their ass by saying oh yeah why you over there trying to figure that shit out we already got games from the original xbox here we already got games for 360 here and the xbox one why you still trying to figure your bullshit out i i, I would be super happy i will buy that shit in a heartbeat but um yeah overall that's that's all i gotta say about the xbox stuff it was very underwhelming uh it was not what i wanted it to be but at the end of the day it was something it wasn't the gut punch that i was hoping they would deliver to sony but <sighs> it is what it is hopefully eventually they'll have that that gut punch that really makes sony say oh shit that actually kind of stung but for right now they just poking at them they just like poking at them i guess you could say that because they got some things that can hit and kind of hurt but for the most part they just poke it at them like boop, boop, boop. Anyway, I don't know what that's supposed to be. But um, yeah, man. Uh I'm done. That's all I gotta say.